I have had a few requests lately in my comments from people asking specific questions about skin prep. And I realized that like, I don't think I've ever made a video specifically about skin prep. Maybe, but certainly not recently because time flies in ways that I didn't consent to. So I went on my Instagram and I asked for y'all's questions about skin prep and you came out of the woodwork. I just think that like too many of y'all have been like holding onto these questions for me and I've just never opened it up. So this is way, way, way long overdue. Let's go ahead and jump in. By the way, the, the, mm, the makeup, it's makeup in today. I spoke way too soon on the Laura Mercier Foundation. <laughs> I put this on and I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> and I'm still on the fence about it. I'm still a little confused about it when it first goes on and I need to try it with some different skin prep to see. But like, all I could think was, wow, this sure is weightless and gosh, it's perfecting. And wow, I look flawless. I, all those little names I was making fun of in the last video, I was like, okay, I get it now. And it's gonna be good for combo skin, I think. Okay, I'm gonna stop like giving everything away. Where is my, my hair is like trying to leave my head. There we go, tickly tickly. In no particular order here, I'm just gonna go through the questions because honestly, they're all just so good. Like there's not really any order to go in. Okay, tips to prevent pilling, please. So pilling, pilling is when you put one product on top of another product and it will actually start to kind of like roll up. I am not sure what the chemical reaction is that causes that, but I've noticed it when something is too water-based versus too silicone-based, typically. Like oils and silicones tend to be okay together, but if you use something that's like totally silicone-free sometimes with something that has a lot of silicones in it, it'll kind of like break itself up. I notice it a lot with SPFs, and it's like more of like a trial and error thing. So if you're trying to prevent pilling, try and isolate the product that's causing it, and then maybe you'll be able to isolate the ingredient in it that is causing it, because it's usually something that's like, you know, a mainstay in your routine, no matter if you're swipping, switching up your uh, foundation or your, uh, your moisturizer or whatever. Like for me, a lot of times I will notice that if I use certain like really strong, heavy oils on like right on top of my Curology, my Curology will pill up because it has quite a bit of silicone in it. And so that's even just in my nighttime skincare routine. And I will find that like, if I let it set for a little while, if I let the Curology set and I'm like a little more careful with my oil, it won't. And so it's not necessarily like an all or nothing thing. And sometimes it's just a matter of like, waiting to let that product like have its time to soak in and experimenting with that. But yeah, pilling can be such a pain, but usually it's one product or like, you know, two products that are that are fighting one another. So I would just kind of, you know, treat it like a scientific experiment. You're gonna keep one as the control and then one that you kind of keep circulating out and, and figure out which one's doing it. Okay, best way to prep skin for balm, balm adjacent foundations, like Sneaky Balm, Blender Cover, and w WTF, What the Foundation from Jones Road. So, all of those are very like wax based, right? They're oil, not oil free, huh. silicone free, I believe. Not the blender cover. I think blender cover has silicones in it and it's a lot grippier. It has a lot more stiffness and tenacity to the formula and it wears much more like a makeup than the other ones that I would say are more in like the bomb bomb category, <laughs> bomb bomb category. To prep your skin for those, it really depends. I mean, all of these, I'm going to try and give as many caveats as I can about the difference between where your skin is starting and where you're trying to go because your skin type and the condition of your skin has everything to do with it. So if you're like me and you deal with, you know, basic like dry skin, like on, on a default day, your skin is dry and you're trying to prep it for a balm foundation, you probably just want to make sure everything is just like plump and hydrated and not over balmed, you know? You don't want to go in with this sunscreen, for example, you know, the Tulip, uh, the Tulip Dew Vitamin Mineral Sunscreen from Bloom Effects because they have this extra serum -y quality that leaves a, a different finish on your skin. You want to prep with something like the Phyto, I'll grab it. You want to prep with something like the Verdant Force Field from Phytosurgeons or the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. These are really similar in performance. This one has more caffeine in it. I'm, I'm not even sure this one has caffeine in it at all. This is vitamin enriched. It does great things. I don't know all the details of it, but this I notice really like plumps and wakes my face up, but it doesn't change the way that makeup performs. 
forms on the skin the way that something that's going to have more slip to it does. But if you have oily skin and you're trying to, bye, if you have oily skin and you're trying to prepare for something balmy, honestly, like, you know, go for as chill of a sunscreen as you can. Maybe even something that has a little bit of grip to it. But I'm assuming that if you're going for a balm foundation, you're probably not super oily unless you're Tom. <laughs> because how is Tom? They're like, I have oily skin and I'm just gonna embrace it and I'm just gonna be dewy, 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 you know? So if that's the case, like you probably don't have as many issues to begin with, you know? How do I prep my skin if each section has different needs? So I would start with something that is kind of like a default, you know, like a, a, just a straightforward moisturizer, like I said, either, you know, the vitamin enriched face base or the Verdant Force Field, or, you know, I use just my Triple Lipid Restore 242 from SkinCeuticals, and it's a moisturizer that it nourishes and it brings my skin back to equilibrium without kind of overcompensating in terms of like texture on my skin. So it's kind of soak in. Then uh, one of the biggest things about skin prep is like diagnosing, like running triage essentially on your face day to day to day, like asking your skin how it's doing, right? And you'll look at it and a lot of times, you know, we'll say, oh, well, this makeup is catching on like dry spots on my face or something. But like, if you had kind of asked your skin what it needed, you might've seen the dry, dry spots before that. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like, you could have triaged that and it wouldn't have been an issue. All like, it, you could have removed the issue before you actually got to putting your makeup on. If you're looking at your skin and you're like, okay, I've, I've moisturized, but like I have visible pores or I have like, and there's nothing wrong with that. So or like texture or what have you. There are absolutely no rules against prepping different parts of your skin differently. Watch any of Hindash's skin prep tutorials. He does them for every video. He shows how he preps the model's skin. He will use ice globes underneath their eyes. He'll use certain serums for certain parts of their face. He'll use certain primers for other parts of their face. And I could tell you all day long, like, yes, you know, permission to use different products on different parts of your face. But if you want to watch an expert, absolutely like nail it every single time, just go on his Instagram or his TikTok or his YouTube channel. Amazing, amazing skin prep. Really interested in how you fit reverse emulsion in. I want to use it, but I need a heavy cream. I use both. <laughs> I use both. I'm horrible. I mean, I'm not horrible because it's what my skin needs, but I do use my Triple Lipid Restore 242 from SkinCeuticals. I keep harping on this because they, they marked it up again. It's like they know, they know that we need it. You know what I mean? It's like gas prices or something. They're like, you need this to run your engine so we can charge whatever we want. It's $150 now. They marked it up $20. That's so freaking tacky. I need a hookup at SkinCeuticals, okay? If anybody knows anybody, let me know. All I just say, I do. I use my SkinCeuticals and I use the reverse emulsion on top of it. And my skin just goes, eh, thank you. <laughs> like, it's never an issue. It's never, like if you're super, super dry skin, especially this time of year in this part of the world, that it does fine. Primer suggestions that are not very silicone-y to control shine. I know you have dry skin, but this. This is the RMS Reevolve Radiance Locking Primer. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm looking up the ingredients real quick just to make sure I'm not talking out of my butt. Yes, so I just wanted to double check. This is silicone free. It is a masterful formula for a primer that will balance your skin out, control shine, and also make it look really even with pretty much no risk of pilling because you're not going to have that silicone kind of fighting against anything else. It's not going to give you a super mattified appearance. And so you do have a lot more control then with the foundation that you choose. And I highly recommend if you are kind of fighting against shine and you want something that is very like perfecting without being silicone-y, I mean, I recommend the RMS foundation as well, the Reevolve foundation. I love them. Also, I feel like now is a good time to start touching on the fact that I'm including setting mists as skin prep, even though they're not skin prep, they're like the digestif. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about aperitifs and like this is the digestive, but I think that it's just kind of whatever you're using to change the texture of your makeup other than makeup. 
So yeah, I think that you can also alter those kinds of things with a with a setting mist. You know, there is that really fantastic one from just, you know, Makeup Revolution has a really great like 16 hour, it's not matte necessarily, but it's mattifying. It's like an, uh, an oil control, shine control kind of formula. And sure, pretty much anything that's gonna be a shine control formula of a setting mist is probably gonna have some alcohol in it, but I haven't found any issues with it. Best prep for a hydrated yet blurred base. Either one of these, the RMS that I was just talking about or the cell rejuvenating priming moisturizer from Victoria Beckham. I know that this is wildly expensive and they did send this to me full transparency. You know, you can go ahead and hate me. I hate me too, but this does something, okay? It comes in one that's not pigmented and then it comes in a golden. And I use the golden to like deepen or like richen really my foundations to give me more like, you know, a healthy look to my skin. And then the other one is just beautiful and hydrating and blurring. And it's just absolutely incredible for like, it truly plumps the skin. And I think a lot of times when we're talking about visible pores and wanting blurring, we think that we need to put something silicone on there to like fill in the pores to blur them. I have already seen one of the questions, so I know that someone's going to touch on this, but I'll go ahead and say, I can't wear any kind of like pore putty primer, like breakout city. Like I'm basically just giving myself comedones, like boom, done, like game over. And so I do have to think around that. I don't have particularly visible like texture and pores, but the wrong thing can accentuate it. And I feel like the way around that is actually plumping. If you plump your skin with something, you're going to end up with everything just looking generally less exaggerated. You know, it's gonna be less did sallow and like, you know, sunken in, in those, those texturized areas. And I feel like that's a better approach for the skin prep part of it. And then for like a setting mist, you can use something that's very blurring and give you that like glycerin finish. So I would say like, you know, Fix Plus, I get longevity from Fix Plus, I really do. But if you want longevity that get, that looks like Fix Plus, yes, spring for the Hourglass Veil. It is just so, incredible. It's incredible. It's freaking so expensive. It's like $48, but the stuff is, I mean, it goes a long way for one thing. It's like this whisper of a mist and it just like, you know, covers your whole face, but it turns your face, your face, it turns your makeup into this like flexible glycerin based like mask essentially without it looking like it. Where like, if you don't have Botox and you're like raising your eyebrows and you know, furrowing and like getting all the 11s and everything, I swear to you, you'll relax your face again and you won't have any creasing because it's just made it into this like <laughs> new, space polymer. I don't understand it. And Hourglass is pretty responsible with their ingredients. I don't think that there's anything like freaky in it. It's just really good. And so if you're looking for something like that, that's going to give you like crazy wild, like almost sweat proof longevity, go for that one. And if you're just living a normal day to day life, like yours truly, I would go for like the Mac fix plus it's like $30 or something. Your facial peel mask, medical intervention routine, IE, uh, microneedling, laser treatment, et cetera. Okay, actually, this is a really great time to talk about this. So yeah, skin prep isn't just the day to day. Sometimes it is kind of these, you know, l larger gestures, right? And I don't think that our skin necessarily can only thrive on like grand gestures, but you go pay an esthetician who knows what they're doing some money for a treatment. And y'all, that is what I call heavy lifting, okay? They do the work. It is worth the money to me. So like a lot of times I will see, you know, kind of, I don't want to say fluffy, fluffy claims in terms of like retinoids and things like that. And I will see wild price tags on them. And it's all kind of about the feel good of it. Now there are really effective ones and that's why they're expensive, but some of the really expensive ones are not necessarily effective. And I think that for those, and if you're kind of tempted by those, or if you find that you're just like goo hoarding because like nothing is really doing everything that you need, take the money that you would normally spend on that and go see an esthetician at like a med spa. You know, I go to a place that does my Botox and they also have a phenomenal esthetician that I would, like I would gladly pay her like a monthly subscription, you know, because I just feel like she could kind of look at my skin and diagnose whatever I needed. I don't do that, but 
it might happen. You know what I mean? Like, I think I'm well on my way. And there's just something really nice about like that level of care too. You know, I think that I, I do probably aspire to be Jackie Ina in some, some form of my life. But, but what I do to answer your question in a long and roundabout way is I do chemical peels in the, oh my back. Oh, in the cooler months because you don't really want to do them when it's hot outside because A, it's a waste of money. You're just going to get the pigmentation back. B, you don't want to be exposed to the sun pretty much any time after getting a peel. You know, like I, I, I want to be conservative and say like, you know, you should wait a couple of weeks and still, you know, you should always wear a lot of like, you know, shade and sun protection and things like that. So it really does make your skin photosensitive. And so you have to be quite careful about that. And so I kind of live in a cycle of my skin getting very pale and unpigmented in the winter. And then I just kind of let the freckles happen in the summer. And that's through sunscreen and everything. But like, I have a pool and I am a, I'm a Florida girl at the end of the day. Like I love my sunshine. And so, you know, I let the photosynthesis happen. It just is what it is. But being Italian, I do end up with the melasma stash. I am very prone to hormonal melasma. And I find that the peels over the winter help so that like I never get to that point in the summer. And some of my favorite maintenance products in that sense, because I do still use actives. Y'all, I love the Neutrogena. The one, like the, the Neutrogena wrinkle, rapid wrinkle repair. It's like $30 at the drugstore. So potent, so effective. I don't, I mean, I understand that there are people who need very, very like heavy lifting in, in that sense. And so I've used something like, it's the one that they advertise online that's like a hydroquinone. Like I've used a hydroquinone before and it's too much for my skin. Like, yes, it will do the job, but like at what cost to your moisture barrier, you know? So I do prefer to maintain my moisture barrier rather than letting it get depleted and trying to repair it. So for something really gentle and pregnancy safe, moon fruit from herbivore, off the charts good so effective so gentle i love that stuff i swear by it i don't use it now because i don't need to i use something stronger i use my neutrogena or the may love glycolic oh my gosh if your face likes glycolic because my my face loves glycolic okay me and glycolic get along so well that freaking overnight face renewer that they do. It's, again, it's like $30. It's unscented. It comes in like this nondescript little tub. So good, so good. And my face is finally like recovering. I got my biologic back on Wednesday. I had to, I was off of it for a month and like my whole body freaked out. Like my chest broke out, my back broke out, my neck broke out, my face broke out, my scalp broke out, everything broke out, my hands broke out, you know? And like, boom, I got my biologic back and like everything is back in order and it's making me really happy. So everything's starting to heal and like my skin is responding to, responding to the glycolic again. I woke up this morning, I was like, oh my God, yes, thank you so much. So. Yeah, I just, it's all, it's always really nice to be able to offer a super, super effective skincare product that like hits all the marks that is not wildly expensive. So I love that one. And then if you do want something that's wildly expensive that I use, you know, in case of emergency, it is, I'll do three nights in a row of the Dr. Dennis Gross peel pads. They're, it's like a two step. So you do, you know, one, one wipe all over, you wait two minutes. That's the amount of time that it takes my electric toothbrush to run. And then you do the kind of the second pad, which I think just kind of neutralizes the process and kind of chills your skin back out. And you do it three days in a row and you'll just really notice like everything a kind of reset. And I'll do that when I need like a hard reset, you know? I've never had micro needling and I've never had laser, but I'm thinking about it. I don't know, I'm down. Like that's the thing is when you trust your esthetician and you just come in and you say, I need a peel. By the way, I've gotten a VI peel when I lived in Texas. I went to Westgate Skin. Go to Westgate Skin, they're so good, I love them. I love them, I love them. Dr. Richardson, Dr. Yan, like those are my girls. Those are my girls and you will never ever be upset that you went there, it's just the best place ever. And I'm not gonna give away where I go here because I don't really, a lot of people know exactly where I live, but um, I do actually drive pretty far to get to my, my Botox place because it's really good. But uh, I, I would trust my esthetician if she told me like, no, you don't want that, you want this. You know what I mean? I'd be like, okay, yes, you know, whatever. Yeah, I want to be perfectly transparent about the fact that like, <laughs> this is not just skincare. <laughs> this is not just skincare. You know, I do have the Botox. I do have, uh, my teeth are all fake, which I think makes a huge difference. And um, I have lip filler. So, you know, it's all it's all the maintenance, but like, I, I don't think I've ever been hotter. So, you know, 
do what you want. How to ensure that hydrating dewy SPF moisturizers don't look sludgy under makeup. <laughs> Ew. It's hard. It's hard because like I really mm, I really feel like your SPF is like a choice right in in your makeup look like I'll go ahead and say it like this right here I love this so much, but it's almost a cosmetic on its own Especially when I'm using the reverse emulsion as well Like I would I've gotten to where I can't really use the reverse emulsion with this. This is the bloom effect this stuff. It's so beautiful and it does actually kind of function as a cosmetic, you know, because it has this beautiful like neutral blur to it. It's so beautiful, but it's so dewy. It's so, so, so do it really reminds me of like a K beauty product, the way that it just perfects the skin, but I have learned to treat it like a, almost like a foundation and then use something like the Monica blender with it because that's a lot drier than, you know, something balmy. Because if I try to use it underneath my Chanel, for example, my Chanel Sublimage Le Tain, wherever my little ladies are, it makes it too sludgy. And so I do lean hard on my Tula in that sense. The Tula Mineral Magic is golden, so it's not for like super, super pale people, but for anyone me and deeper, it's gonna work. And it is the most uncomplaining mineral face sunscreen I have ever used. It does such a good job, again, of like giving you a little bit of the mineral blur, but like so undoy. It's not going to give you any kind of disruption to your makeup, so I would recommend that if you're having trouble with that. Order of application and what can go together layering actives. So as far as like, you know, just cosmetic elegance is concerned, one of the biggest like uh, rules of thumb is thin to thick. You know, you want to go with like your essence if you use one first or your toner, then like, you know, a serum, then a treatment, you know, or whatever. And then like you go to, you know, each like thicker and thicker and thicker. And then you end with an oil because it's like the most occlusive or you end with at night with like a, you know, a slugging cream or something to just, you know, moisture cocoon yourself. That's kind of the nighttime routine. But as far as day, I really try and like keep it as simple as possible because I want to give my skin as much as I can without putting too much product on my face because I know I'm gonna go put makeup on. So typically I will, you know, wash my face, splash it with water, usually not to disrupt the uh, moisture barrier unnecessarily. This morning though, I did use this because it is a godsend if you're having peely skin. This is the Good Molecules Pineapple Exfoliating Powder. It's an enzyme exfoliator. It is a little bit, you know, gritty, but it's it's like a rice powder. So it's dissolving as you're using it. It's not doing anything really super abrasive. And if you really are like freaked out by it at any time, which I don't think you would be, you can rub it until it's just a foamy milk. You can rub it until it basically doesn't have any excoriation to like physical excoriation to it anymore and just go. By the way, y'all, I am, I am a licensed esthetician. I've never practiced as an esthetician, but that's why I like use all those words is because like I went to school for it. So don't like be, to take that to Reddit and be like, oh my gosh, Khaki's an esthetician because like I'm never going to be able to back up that claim ever, okay? But I am licensed for it. I did go to school for it. Anyway, this has vitamin C, fruit enzymes, and rice powder. So it's just going to slough. It's gonna slough off, you know, any of the kind of stuff that gathers around your, you know, all your little lines and stuff. Or like, I get a lot of dry stuff when everything's healing. It'll just kind of take that top layer off so your makeup goes on more smoothly. It makes such a huge difference. So I started with that and then I go in with an essence. I've been using the Fortuna Skin Essence. I think it's really lovely. It's a really great way to balance your skin out and add a little bit of moisture that doesn't do anything to the actual finish of your skin. Or it shouldn't, you know what I mean? An essence typically doesn't add a texture, like a finishing texture just kind of soaks in, like that should be what it does. And then I go, I went in with my Triple Lipid Restore 242 today, like a thick moisturizer, but then I finish actually with the reverse emulsion a lot of times, if, especially if I kind of want that like dewy finish because, and if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, let me just pull it out because about it. <laughs> this is the Make Beauty Reverse Emulsion. It's become kind of um, a star a mainstay on my channel since it came out. They sent it to me and I have now bought three bottles of it since then with my own money because I can't live without it. And the way, and I already wiped the other swatch off, so this is just this. The way that this gets so grippy and gorgeous on the skin, like it really starts to, it feels like a serum that's committing, but it leaves the most beautiful, you know, <laughs> aging in reverse kind of glow on your skin. But 
it's going to have a texture. It's not going to completely rub in. Like the point of it is to look perfected and have this gorgeous like glowing texture on your skin. It's not meant to then vanish. So if you're not wanting a texture that's going to interfere with your makeup, I would skip that. But a lot of people think of it almost as a cosmetic. And I don't typically do oils when I'm skin prepping for my makeup, just because that's just, it's too risky. You know, that stuff kind of sits on the top of my skin. Another really great kind of essence that I use, especially when I don't feel like, I don't know, toiling with a lid. Like some days you're just that lazy. To be able to pick something up and spray it on your face makes all the difference in the world. So this is the Caudalie Eau de Beauté, the Beauty Elixir, smoothing, glowing complexion, all skin types. It's just a really great herbal tonic, you know? Mm, mm. But it is a little glowy. Like if you set your makeup with it, you will end up with a little bit of a glow. If you were a fan of the Lila B spray, this is pretty darn similar. It's not gonna give the a glow face mist. It's not gonna give you as much, quite as much of a glow, but it's pretty similar. It would make you miss it less. Cause that stuff was gorgeous. <laughs> they're the same friggin' price. They're still both, they're both crazy expensive. I want glow to last all day dry skin over here. Yes, okay. So this means we're going all the way to the end of the spectrum in terms of glow. And for that, especially if you're still wanting to wear makeup, you're not just wanting to like, you know, be glowy skincare gal all day. You do want to pick the right products that do the right things for the texture, not build up a bunch of syrupy, sludgy stuff on your face. So I would start with regular skin prep, you know what I mean? Like regular moisturizers that aren't going to have any kind of cosmetic effect. And then this is amazing. This is amazing. It's like Grace Helbig, like, can you see it? Can you see it? I just started using this and I can't stop. It is the Ciate Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer. It's so awesome. Y'all, you just have to see the comment that someone made with the timestamp about me putting this on my face. I can't, I'm, I think I'll get demonetized if I say it, but it was the funniest comment I've gotten in a really, really long time on that video. That was my, you know, spring forward video. You just have to go look at that comment. It was so funny. I put it on my, my Instagram stories. It was hilarious. Anyway, this is so beautifully lightweight. It hydrates and moisturizes and it leaves a little bit of slip, but nothing wildly glowy, nothing wildly um, radiant. You know what I mean? Like it's not gonna give you any shimmer, which is something I noticed gets lumped together when we're talking about like a dewy face prep routine. A lot of times it'll have like a radiant sheen to it. Doesn't typically bother me. I don't really care one way or the other, but this does it. And that's worth noting. It's just a really beautiful, perfectly lightweight, but not uh, like silicone-y lightweight serum texture on the skin that adds glow and it does have uh, a little bit of vitamin C in it, which is nice. Vitamin C is going to help strengthen your sun protection factor, unlike other actives. So yeah, start with this if you want like that dewy all day kind of thing. Use whatever foundation because like I don't necessarily think that you have to use a dewy foundation to achieve a dewy look. It's kind of more about the skin prep and about the digestive of it all. And I would say like your best friend is going to be MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance. Like, just douse yourself in it at the end of your makeup routine and you're gonna be gorgeous and dewy, like glossy dewy. Beautiful, healthy, just hydrated looking skin all day. And it's technically a prep product. It is called, you know, Prep and Prime. So I use it as a finishing spray, but you can use it as like a, as a prep spray too. How do I make my pores less visible? Nothing works and half of it irritates my skin. This is the one I was talking about, where it's like, yeah, it's gonna irritate my skin too because I'm sitting there taking something silicone-y like the, you know, the pore Benefit Porefessional and just like smashing it into my pores. Like, good freaking luck. <laughs> like, it just seems seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? Plus, it's so silicone-y, it'll be like one spot on your face that like ma makeup will behave entirely differently on. So again, my tip is to find something actually, like, you know, do normal like skin prep in terms of your skincare. Like, do something that's not going to have any kind of cosmetic effect at the end. It's just gonna kind of balance your skin out and then use something plumping like either of these. So Phytosurgeons Phyto uh, Verdant Force Field I think is gonna be the most affordable out of all of these and it's got caffeine in it. It's remarkable. It's awesome and it's not dewy. It's gonna give your skin just like a really even finish. It's so good for under makeup and it really just like brings your skin back to life. So it's actually gonna have a little bit of a blur to it without silicone. Well I don't know if it doesn't have silicones in it. It might have a little bit. Aloe 
propanedol, glycerin, jojoba, cabric triglyceride, emulsifying wax. So like you're not, yeah, that's not everything, but like you're not gonna get like a big like silicone pore filling effect from this, but it still has a blur factor to it and it's gonna wake your skin up and plump it and like help everything look more smooth to begin with. This is gonna be kind of middle of the road in terms of doing this, and it's gonna give you a little bit of radiance, and this is the RMS one, and then, you know, if you want a really, like, radiant finish, but you still want a little bit of that, like, well, a lot of bit of that, like, plumping, I would go for the Victoria Beckham. What sunscreen to use under the Sublimage Laton? <laughs> Not the Bloom Effects. I would use the Tula. Now, something that I do wanna note because some people can't use mineral sunscreens because, you know, and, and that's why chemical sunscreens exist, and there are a lot of really great kind of, like, what are they? They're somewhere in the middle, you know, innovations that are happening in like K-beauty and J-beauty. Like they have completely different um, laws about what you can call a sunscreen in Asia. And they're just innovating so much more than we are in terms of like these more elegant formulas that are more effective at sun protection. So I definitely recommend looking into those. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. But as far as stuff that I've actually like tried and used and, and appreciated, do not sleep on the Thrive Cosmetics Sunproof SPF. That is one of the most effective primers I've ever used. It is blurring. I wouldn't say it's like for wildly dry skin. I don't use it on wildly dry skin days. It's not gonna dry your skin out, but it's also not gonna like help. But if you are combo to oily and you want a good, effective chemical SPF that's clear and truly holds on to your makeup. Like that's the one thing about Thrive is like performance, performance, performance. Carissa does have pretty oily skin and so she is all about makeup with wear time. And that sunscreen will make your makeup wear. It is awesome. Reverse emulsion before or after SPF before. SPF should always be last because otherwise you're going to take something and like rub the SPF around and like dilute it almost. I'm not sure if that's like perfect you know, physics talking about that, but that's just my imagination. Like if you finish with an oil on top of your sunscreen, you're gonna break down your sunscreen. And so I would definitely, I would go reverse emulsion. I do like my reverse emulsion while I'm in the bathroom. This is unscientific. And then I do my SPF before I do my makeup, you know? because I usually do it in order like that. If I know I'm not gonna wear makeup, I throw my SPF right on top. How to deal with peeling and dry skin in the winter. Okay, so, you know, we talked about actives, right? And, you know, having a good maintenance actives routine, so especially, especially glycolic. I mean, I think that like retinol and like tretinoin and things like that are almost going to do as much not harm, but they're going to create as much dry skin as they solve in the short term. They're gonna do a great job in the long term, but if like you're looking for like a, a, like a gentler but quicker fix just to get the dry skin to not be like sloughing, I would go for either that May Love Glycolic or Moon Fruit, like I said, from Herbivore, because they're going to just kind of work a little bit more gently and a little bit like closer to the surface of the skin and just balance everything out. And they do help to like, you know, fade pigmentation and stuff, but not as aggressively as like that Neutrogena Retinol, because that stuff is not messing around. <laughs> but on a day to day, if you're noticing that you're, you know, seeing it in the mirror before you put your makeup on or whatever, you don't need to like scrub aggressively. And I've heard some people just like wash their, especially if you shower in the morning, you wash your face, just wipe your, wipe your face with your towel. Like that's absolutely okay when your skin's all warmed up and everything. But if you're like me and you shower at night, this is so fantastic. So fantastic, this rice powder for just getting like that top surface level peely crud off. And sometimes it's not even a matter of my skin being dehydrated. It's a matter of something healing. It's a matter of my skin actually improving from something that wasn't doing well. And I still just kind of want to like clear off all the evidence of that from overnight. And it's just amazing stuff. It's so gentle and it's like $18 and it lasts forever. This is like my second bottle of it ever that I've owned. And I use it all the time. It's like impossible to get through it. I sweat while putting on makeup. How do I start with a matte canvas without losing the glow at the end? So yeah, if you have something in your routine that you know is gonna work to counteract the the sweat and the sebum while you're doing your makeup, like you know you have a primer that you like for that, just finish with MAC Fix Plus because that's gonna give you that dewy finish. Now, you can use something like the Tula and that's gonna give you even more of like a radiant finish if that's what you're looking for. I would though, if you are, if you have like actual like oily prone, you know what I mean, skin where you're sweating quite a bit, I would not do the MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance. They are quite different and regular Fix Plus is going to be where I would like top out in terms of dewiness 
for like your skin type, but it's going to make everything look glorious. It's gonna make it look gorgeous. I really, I'm like a firm believer in like finishing your makeup with something that is not the most like wildly mattifying powder. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like lightweight. It just means usually that it's not like HD white, you know, or like too, like too much color mattification. If you use something like the House Labs, for example, you're gonna be able to find something in a shade that works for your skin, but it still keeps the luminosity while functioning for oil control. And then you can finish with something that does have that beautiful glow to it, but it still helps your makeup last. I think that like that, those finishing touches are going to give you the look that you want while you still get the longevity from like the base product that your skin type needs. What's required for putting makeup over flaky skin? Like I said, yeah, go for, go for like a, a good like enzyme rice powder kind of uh, exfoliant in the morning. How to keep makeup from getting gummy and not sticking. So there are a lot of things that can cause gumminess. And I guess I'll start with one, which is like the sludgy gumminess, which is like you've used too many slippy products either underneath your makeup or in combination with your like foundation and stuff. And so I would just suggest moving to, if you're gonna use something that is quite dewy, using a foundation that can work with that, like test it by diluting it. So take a foundation and if you can dilute it with your very dewy skincare, then it's gonna work with it but if they kind of resist each other, don't wear them together. Do you know what I mean? And so it's like, if I take this Victoria Beckham and I mix this with my Chanel Sable Maj Le Tain, oh, it's like angels singing. But if I were to try and mix this sunscreen, for example, with the sublimage, it wouldn't work at all. They would resist one another. And you can also mix them together before you put them on your skin. So you end up with less of each on. That's gonna help too. And then the other way that things can get sludgy is if you're using something like the Milk Hydro Grip, which in small amounts is one of the most effective gripping primers I've ever used. But if you put too much of this on, it will make like an aloe barrier on your skin. <laughs> I don't know if it's actually aloe, I just am going on color here, but it makes this weird gel barrier on your skin where like by midday you're looking at your face and you're like, why does it look like my makeup is like sitting on top of my skin? Like the entire face of makeup looks like it's kind of lifted up. It looks surreal. And it's because this is very much like a, a gel barrier between your skin and your makeup. And that can make things just look really, really strange or feel really strange. So use less of that or try a different gripping primer, but it will make your, it will make it gummy, you know? So I would say it's all about like balancing both the amount of the products that are on your skin and the, you know, those textures of, of what's on your skin. And sometimes it can just be saved with a powder. What time of day should I use a serum? Should it be vitamin C? Okay, so everybody is different as to what is effective on their skin. I don't personally find a whole lot of like shining results from using a vitamin C. I've used a couple of vitamin Cs that I did like, but it's still not the most potent ingredient that gives me the most satisfaction for my skin. So I can't tell you whether like vitamin C is like the thing for you, you know? But I mean, there's a reason Carissa puts it in like every single product from Thrive and that is because she loves it and it works for her, you know? So everybody's different. I find that like glycolic and retinoids are the ones that work the best for me. I also, I dabble in a little lactic acid here and there, but it's more important to kind of understand what each one does when you say when to use serums. There are a gazillion serums. There are so many. Some of them have something like a hyaluronic acid in them. So a hyaluronic acid is going to supposedly help with hydration, but if you put it directly on top of your dry skin, it's going to pull the moisture out of your skin instead of hydrating it. Instead, you wanna put it on top of a moisturizer or on skin that's already damp because then it's going to pull the moisture out of the air and it's going to pull it into your skin. So that's, that's my issue with hyaluronic acid is that there's not enough education around how to like make it function properly. And like for the longest time I was noticing, I was like, why is it just drying my skin out? Because it literally does the opposite if you use it wrong. Vitamin C is a brightening product, but again, not if you're like Italian and prone to melasma, vitamin C is not going to, it's not going to eradicate melasma. And vitamin C is a product that you can use daytime. Hyaluronic acid is something you can use daytime, but like a glycolic or a retinoid or a, lactic acid or anything like that, you, I mean, there are brands that say that they can use them during the day because they've got enough SPF or whatever. Mm -mm, not me. 
my skin is far too photosensitive on its own that if I were to do that, the melasma would come back within a day. It would be there so fast. So if you deal with those kinds of issues, don't risk it, just use them at night. And it's always very important to read the bottle. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to condescend to you, but the bottles do typically say what time of day to use them. And it's just about knowing what you're trying to achieve and not just having someone kind of sell something to you based on like, you know, like, oh, everyone loves this. It's going to work for you kind of thing. It's more about knowing what you're trying to achieve. Like, do you have deep melasma? Do you have, or are you just trying to kind of deal with like, you know, a little bit of freckling here and there, or you just want a little bit of like brightening as far as like your, your skin's just got lazy cell turnover or something. And you can kind of start with gentler things and like move up, you know, but I honestly, I don't think anyone would hate moon fruit from herbivore. It's the gentlest bakuchal I've ever used and it's so effective. All right. And finally, please explain how to make dewy skin longer wearing. So it's not like make your skin stay dewy all day. It's like, I want dewy skin, but I also want it to be long wearing because a lot of times we're talking about something that's like a balm foundation and you're just not gonna get the longevity out of it. So you look at my skin right now, you say, wow, she looks dewy, right? I'm not wearing a dewy foundation. I'm wearing the Laura Mercier. This is a very natural finish, you know, kind of foundation. I just used the MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance on top and then you also saw me, you know, as a, an audible, I, you know, demonstrated my Eau de Beauté from Caudalie on top, but like that's, that's the main thing, that and not over powdering. I did try a new powder today and I feel like I'm actually a poor representation of my own ethics right now because I used this powder that was new to me. I don't know what I did with it, but it's from Ciate and it is like HD white. And I feel like it's like over mattifying my under eyes a little bit, which looks good on camera. I'll be honest, like it looks a lot better on camera, but in person it looks a little bit like makeup-y and it's not my favorite. And I would rather it be a little bit more hydrated looking. And so I think that like really, dewiness doesn't have to be your entire routine. There are even low coverage foundations that make it look like you're wearing a skin tint, like a dewy skin tint that aren't in and of themselves dewy that you can use to, you know, do all your makeup and then hit it with a dewy setting mist at the end and you get more longevity out of it. So, you know, the Neutrogena um, Healthy Skin, yeah, the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Foundation, uh, L'Oreal True Match, uh, nude. The Laura Mercier Tint and Moisturizer Light Revealer, these are all super low coverage foundations that still function like foundations. Like they still wear like a reliable long wearing makeup, even though they have very low coverage and not, they don't have much dew to them. So you can manipulate the texture a lot better and your skin shows through. So I would definitely recommend any of those. So yeah, ooh, I was so happy. Like I just, it was just all off the dome, y'all. Like all of your questions, I was, it was like, I felt like I was just sitting down talking to you because these are the things that I would recommend to my friends if they had these kinds of questions. This is gonna be a great, hopefully a great resource for y'all to come back to or for me to be able to kind of refer people to. So yeah. Thank y'all for your questions, so nice. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up. Put a video right here that I think you're gonna enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't already. I love y'all so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.